Welcome back to our channel. Thanks for joining us today. I wanted to share with you some mail that I got today. It has been long awaited and I was so excited it came. I got a bag, a one pound bag of dried elderberries and I wish you could smell this. It smells beautiful. Um, I ended up purchasing this bag of elderberries because I was running out of our homemade elderberry syrup. And I didn't pay attention to where it was coming from, and it was coming from another country. So it ended up taking a lot longer to get to us than I expected, and we ran out of our elderberry syrup that we currently use. Um, and shortly after that, we started getting really sick. Most this winter, we've actually stayed pretty healthy, and then as soon as we ran out, we started getting hit with sickness after sickness, and it's just gotten worse and worse. So, I am so excited that our elderberry showed up today, and we are gonna make elderberry and rose hip syrup. To start our recipe, we are gonna use half a cup of dried elderberries. To that, I like to add rose hips. This is what a rose hip looks like. It's the part that's left after the rose blooms and the blossom dies. Rose hips are loaded with vitamin C and have other vitamins and nutrients in them. And so I just, these came from our own rose bushes and we like to add about a quarter cup of rose hips to that mix. Okay, many people at this point will add a cinnamon stick to their mix. I don't happen to have cinnamon sticks, so I typically add a little bit of cinnamon to the mix. Um, I do about an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon, depending on what you like. I also add cayenne pepper to this mix. It's really good at kind of getting your blood flowing and moving, and I just feel like it kind of helps knock out some of those germ bugs. To that, I add an eighth of a teaspoon. You can add more than that if you can stomach it but I want my kids to be able to drink this and they won't if it's too spicy. Normally I would add fresh ginger to this mix but I do not have any fresh ginger today. I am still out. So I am going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of ground ginger to that. Okay so those are all the spices and herbs that I'm going to add to this mix. We will be adding two cups of water next and then putting it onto the stove. Okay, our mixture's on the stove. We're gonna put a lid on it and get this up to a light boil and then we're gonna turn it down to a simmer. We don't wanna boil it too hard. Okay, we are at a boil, probably a little harder than we should have. We're gonna turn this down right away and then we're gonna let this simmer so it's about half in size. I just kind of give it a good while. I don't really have a specific time, but I just let it simmer until I think it looks good. When the berries are all done in the water, you're gonna strain out the berries and then you're gonna add a cup, this might be a little more than a cup, of honey. Now our honey, we buy by the bucket, which you can see right there, um, from a local or a fairly local person and it comes solid as a rock. And so what I just do is, while that's on the heat, there's no heat on this burner, but I put it in a glass bowl just next to, next to the berries that are simmering so that hopefully the heat will kind of help this start to melt, but you're gonna also add it into the warm elderberry syrup and that will help melt it as well. You don't really want to microwave the honey because it kind of kills off all the good things inside of it. And so it's best to kind of slowly heat up that honey. So I ended up adding a little more water, probably about a cup and a half to the mix in the pot because when it had already reduced by half, but my rose hips were still pretty hard and I want those nice and soft because if they're still rock hard, they haven't released anything into the water. 
Um, at this point, they're getting soft. They're not quite there. So I'm gonna leave this to sit for a little bit longer. It's been about half an hour so far. I'm gonna turn it down even a little bit more and give it probably another 10 minutes and then we'll strain it out. Okay, the rose hips are nice and soft, so we're gonna strain this out. Now one thing, if you're using rose hips, inside the rose hips it has little hairs and those hairs are actually used to make itching powder. So how I strain my mix is I do one strain to get the big pieces out and then I'll strain it again through cheesecloth to make sure that all those little itchy hairs get out of it. Okay, so now that we've double strained the elderberry juice, we are gonna add the honey to our elderberry juice. Okay, here is my bottled up elderberry syrup. This was an old um, salad dressing container. It's a nice glass bottle. I thought it looked really cute, so I kept it. So I used that, and then we've got almost another full pint jar. So, and then I've got some kids ready to try it, because we have actually been sick, and so it'd be nice to kind of get better. Here's our big kid. We're gonna see how well she does with taking the elderberry syrup because she's our one today that just got diagnosed with the flu. So we're gonna try and do one teaspoon. And she is not the best at taking medicine. So we'll see. Oh, it's a little spicy, huh? I'll put the dosages that I have seen recommended in the description. Now I am not a doctor and you need to decide what's the best solution for your family. We like this because we feel like it helps fight against the flu and cold and kind of helps a little bit with getting over it a little bit faster. Thanks again for joining us today. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Whoa, where'd she go?